Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today looking at something quite specific, which is the canisters used with the S6 respirator, the canisters or filters. I thought this video might be of interest to some. I know there are an increasing number of people collecting post Second World War British kit and more and more people reenacting that period as well. So I thought this sort of brief guide to the filters used with the S6 respirator might be useful. And there are some interesting differences between these and some changes to the design, the reasons for which are quite interesting as well. So we're going to have a look at these three different canisters in some detail now. So here are the three canisters or filters we're going to have a look at. There's nothing specialist here. These are basic MBC filters and there is very little difference between these two, obviously a marked difference between the, the two at the top and this one here. We'll talk about that a little, in a little bit more detail as the video progresses. We have here earliest round to latest, and this particular example here is a mid 60s dated canister. If I bring this in here and get the light right, let's see if I can find the, the marking here. There's the date, there we are. Reflect the light off there, you can see 2, 65, so February 1965 actually marked into the metalwork. So that's when this part of the canister was stamped out. I have another date around the rim, if I remember correctly, or is it on the back with this one? Sorry, it's on the back with this one. 22nd, the 6th, 65. And that will be the date that this was actually assembled and the date for when the charcoal and so forth was inserted into it. These are the primary filter uh, medium in these is activated charcoal. There is also a particulate filter. Uh, one day I might pick up one of the later examples and, and do a cutaway to show the interior. As I say, with these ones, you, you no longer have asbestos as part of the design, as far as I'm aware. If you look inside the, the hole there, you can see the outer particulate filter. And obviously that holds all of the, the inside of the canister together. The top is sort of crimped on. You can see there's a, a, a rim here where this has been crimped on after it's been filled. And the distinctive feature between this one and this one really other than slight detail differences in the construction is the dark grey finish to the front of this and my understanding is from the introduction of the S6 this is what you'd see initially is these sort of dark grey the rest of the canister is black but the, the front face of it is dark grey this one here is black otherwise very similar as you can see this is a late 60s canister or filter we can see here again the metalwork is marked and we have 269 at the top there and then we again have the, the date stamped on the back and the actual fill date of this is the 10th of the 2nd, 1970. So an early 1970s canister, the front plate having been made in the late 60s. And these be used, I believe, through the 70s. And I think it's in the 70s that this, the late 70s, that this design began to supersede these. There's a slight detail difference in the, the rim of these but not, not a great deal. You can just see a slight detail difference in the, in the thickness there. That may be a, a manufacturing variation. They are basically very, very similar, almost identical, but for the fact of the, the different colour. So early through mid 60s, obviously a, a very late 60s, early 70s canister here. I believe this later design arrived in the, the mid to late 1970s and was used into the 1980s. And I have seen these in use in training scenarios with the S10 as well, with a red band around them uh, for use as a, as a training canister, a training filter. Obviously, these are all well past the sell-by date and they've been, or well, well past their use-by date rather, sell-by date, use-by date. And obviously they've been exposed. They've not been sealed in packaging. So the charcoals have plenty of time to react to uh, contaminants in the air. These differ, these later canisters differ quite markedly, as you can see. In terms of design, you no longer have the, the single central intake hole in the outside face of the canister there. Obviously, air in this instance is drawn through the hole, through the, the body of the filter, through the filter medium inside, and then through here into the intake of the respirator. The intake is the same, of course. It's the standard 40 millimeter uh, thread there. And in fact, the back of the two canisters is basically identical, as you can see there. Slight detail differences, but basically identical. The front face of this can later canister is, is markedly different in that it has holes around the periphery. So each of these, there's a slot on each side and the air is drawn in on each side all the way around. Now the advantage of this is, of course, it's a lot more difficult to block these holes. Say if the canister were to be pressed up against something, it's very easy for this central hole to be blocked or to be occluded with mud and so forth. 
this design here that's a lot more difficult because there are many small holes all the way around the periphery and the way this is designed is that if it's blocked like that obviously air can still get in around this rim here and be drawn in through the holes it may make breathing more difficult but it's not going to stop the flow of air entirely obviously you have the design printed into the uh, imprinted into the front here stamped into the front to give some rigidity to this front face of the the canister obviously the design is stamped in to give some, some rigidity as are the the little uh, stamped um, sections around the side here obviously that gives this back section a bit more rigidity as well it strengthens the strengthens the canister this particular example as you can see here is dated 4th 11th 1980 so a late 1980 dated example of one of these and as I say my understanding with these is they were introduced in the mid to late 1970s happy to be corrected on that as I say any more definite dates people have of when these changed over when the design production changed over I'd be interested to know obviously these older canisters would still be used up in training and so forth as you see with these in use with the S10 later on after it began to replace the S6 these older canisters much as they weren't the canisters that would be issued for frontline use if that ever became necessary they were still used in training to some degree uh, later on with the S10 as well so that's just a look at these three different designs of canister as I say these two here extremely similar and this the later example obviously with the modification to stop this central or to remove the, the risk of this central air hole becoming obstructed so I hope you found it interesting looking at that as I say just a look at the visual differences between these the external differences between them Hopefully it's been of use. Uh, it's certainly nice to pull bits and pieces like this out and have a look at them in some detail from time to time. And I do hope it has been of interest to you uh, looking at these. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.